So uh, she she has this big conversion, but in terms of this statue, it's a little tiny thing, isn't it? Do I remember right? I think I've seen it in uh, Spain. Okay. Uh, I remember it slightly bigger, but but uh, it, it's not a life size. Yeah, it's not um, a big one. Yeah, and uh, but um, but somehow when she encountered that statue, it you know it's the it's the Eche Womo is the statue where Jesus has been scourged and mocked, and um, and the crown of thorns has been placed on his head, reed in his hand, and. Pilate, he's pulled out in front of the crowds, and Pilate says, "Behold the man." Mm -hmm. And so it's the humiliated, um, uh, beaten. mocked, beaten, uh, uh, abandoned, denied, uh, betrayed Jesus. And, and I, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, uh, you know, he, he, this Jesus who suffered so much, is the threshold into mental prayer for Saint Saint Teresa of Avila, Saint de, Teresa de Jesus. Now, in, in, when you say threshold, I think, so she was wrestling with prayer. You know, she did read the book. It did help her. She read these other texts that you described. She was fluctuating in and out. In my mind, what helped her, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, what helped her to have this encounter? So, you know, there might be some people out there thinking, well, gosh, I'd sure love that kind of an encounter. In some ways, um, the progress of mental prayer, let's say, from uh, discursus, like thinking about the text and Jesus in Scripture and that sort of thing, uh, from that kind of prayer to affective prayer, where then the, the uh, I wanted to say the emotional uh, component, because what is happening in our mind actually reaches our heart and begins to spill over into our humanity, right? And then, but this, would you put this in the category of um, affective prayer and experience in that kind of deeper meditation, let's say, or is, or do you put this in the realm of a mystical vision uh, kind of an encounter? Well, it can be many things at the same time. Yeah. And uh, so we make these distinctions to try to understand different kinds of graces but the way the the graces are communicated to you, they're kind of multivalent uh, uh, realities, and so um, uh, I I think probably um, uh, uh, one you know when you're dealing with a statue, you're dealing with a form of prayer that that um, uh, uh, is called. Um, composition of place exterior composition of places when you have a beautiful work of art that's before you that moves your heart to devotion uh so it's a sacramental you know and so she was dealing with the sacramental and that's that's certainly at play here but her experience of this sacramental went over and above what a sacramental usually does um uh the love of christ uh uh, uh who suffered for her uh, all this humiliation so that she might be able to have a friendship with him, her bridegroom, uh, uh, all of a sudden uh, wasn't an idea or an abstraction, uh, uh, but uh, another, uh, a real person before her vulnerable. And, um, and he was inviting her, her vulnerability invited her to be vulnerable with him. Mm -hmm. And so there's something of a mystical grace there. There's something, uh, uh, perhaps there's something extraordinary there. There's definitely something affective that you've said, um, and, uh, but something that has also entered into her imagination and and stamped her intellect. All of this, all of this uh, kind of fires together in in this moment where where she uh, another way to look at this grace is you know what's her response to this grace it's it's compunction you know uh, 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 tear she's pierced to the heart by how much Jesus and his vulnerability has loved her well well um, uh, this this is the 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 highway the p pathway in into the heart of the father is to be pierced by the revelation of his love and the suffering of his son. 
Yes, she said in her autobiography, I've seen clearly that it is by this door that we must enter if we wish his sovereign majesty to show us his great secrets. This door is, of course, meditating on the humanity of Jesus. What does it mean? So we've been, obviously, we're using Teresa of Avila as the backdrop because this was, you know, such a huge part of her conversion and very much a part of our, your life and my life in terms of her her influence on us and on all that we do is quite significant. But what is what is what does it mean to meditate on the humanity of Jesus? Um, uh, and and I think, of course, it it begs the question as compared to the divinity of Jesus. Okay. Uh, well, that okay. Um, uh, if I if I could back up because th this is actually going to answer your question but uh, uh, you know this is an um, this is a very vital question can you contemplate the the divinity of Jesus without his humanity and the answer is no right. um, we only know his divinity through his humanity that's how God has chosen to reveal himself to us but but to back up a little bit what was the doorway that helped Teresa enter into the humanity of Jesus and and I'm speculating here uh, and so th this is an area people could disagree with me but I think it was the death of her father hmm. um, if you read the life you'll discover the father began to go to his daughter to seek spiritual counsel and she actually because of reading the spiritual alphabet was pretty conversant with the spiritual with mental prayer and the practices that sustained it so she gave him that information he, he took it to heart and began to live it and um and one day in one of their conversations uh he, he asked her you know when this happens in prayer 